Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Everton show, needless to say. Much of our focus this evening will be on the FA Cup quarter-final at Goodison Park on Saturday. It's a tea time kick-off and one of the Premier League's informed teams stands between the Toffees and another trip to Wembley. It truly is a mouth-watering prospect and one that I'm sure Ian Snowden is very much looking forward to. Snodds, this is a game we can win. Oof, bring it on. What a big game. Uh, Chelsea have improved uh, fantastically well since uh, the beginning of the season, <coughs> but they're beatable. Mm -hmm. um, we can beat these, no problem. If the crowd turn up and if the players turn up, we will be going to Wembley, does. There's no if about it. The crowd no. will be fantastic, won't they? Yeah, it'd be great. I, it's an atmosphere that I'm going to be looking forward to. I know we'll be doing commentary, and uh, but let's hope that Goodison is rocking that day. We can't wait for it, can we? Plenty more to come from Snods on the FA Cup quarter-final later in the programme, but the match against Chelsea on Saturday is far from being our only topic of conversation on this week's show. Yeah, the Cup games are a little bit more special you know obviously the the best one this year is the, the first leg of the semi-final against man city if we can replicate any sort of performance and any sort of you know, backing from the fans as, as that day then i'm sure everyone will go home happy the crowd won a trophy just our supporters won a trophy so this is going to be an absolutely magnificent occasion and hand on hearts, I think we're going to win it. I just want to play against the big teams all the time and, and uh, you know in the Premier League you always against, uh, play against good sides and even now in the Cup, good game at Goodison Park in the evening, perfect. I practice my, my English but I try it and yes I'm, I, I answered all the questions for, for the ladies. Snods, we've already played Chelsea at Goodison Park this season, beat them 3-1, but mm. this will be a different Chelsea. Yeah, it will. Um, they're, they're high in confidence. Um, Gus Hiddink seems to have got the players playing again. I never thought I'd said that about uh, Jose Mourinho, you know, that he'd lost the dressing room. So I thought there were all the players were behind him, uh, but obviously not. And uh, But he seems to have changed it now. He seems to change the whole atmosphere of Stamford Bridge, the dressing room, and the players are wanting to play for this, this fella. Uh, so it's going to be a difficult game, really, really is, but I'm more concerned about us than Chelsea. Something went badly wrong at Chelsea, though, didn't it, for the first couple of months? From the outside looking in, mm. something just wasn't right. It was clear. Yeah, it was clear. And uh, as you said, he, he was a god down there to the mm. Chelsea fans, Mourinho, and uh, and the players seemed to, as you like, John Terry Lampard in, their first, in his first spell, uh, seemed to idolise him, but he seems to have lost that a little bit uh, with some of the players that, were all, that are there, sorry. Uh, so yeah, it was it was strange what was happening down at Chelsea. We should have beat them at Stamford Bridge as well, though, shouldn't we? Yeah, don't uh, don't mention that one. Does another disappointing last minute uh, offside goal. Mm. Uh, really, really frustrating. But the lads played well, and we showed we're capable of beating Chelsea. It was a 98th minute winner in a 97 minute game. <laughs> Wait that one out. Well, we've often said on this very show that where Everton lead, others will follow. The Toffees have never shied away from making groundbreaking decisions. And at a recent Premier League summit, our CEO Robert Elston spoke out strongly on the subject of ticket prices. He then duly proved that he was prepared to put his money where his mouth is. And Everton's season tickets have bucked the Premier League trend by coming down. We've tried to do lots of good things around uh, young fans in particular and uh, and this year's just I think seen us go one step further and uh, and make those young fan offers even better, even wider, even deeper and uh, add on to that something for some of our senior fans and I think most importantly and probably a bit of a surprise to a lots of to, to, to a lot of fans is um, you know we took a decision to uh, uh, reduce adult prices and you know the the, the basis of that was uh, I think it's right that clubs are being held to account on ticket prices in particular given the amazing new uh, television deal um, you know in, in terms of Everton's financial position the increase in TV revenues over the last four or five seasons has been phenomenal therefore I think to you know take the opportunity to give something back to all fans Perhaps fans were, were expecting um, a freeze, therefore hopefully we've given them you know, a really nice surprise, which is, as I said, you know, feel, felt very natural, felt the, you know, the right thing to do. We spent a lot of time on it, we spent a lot of time listening, then we spent a lot of time budgeting and looking at what would happen to, to revenues if we did it. Um, 
we got ourselves in a position where we felt it was the right thing to do. We uh, we got board approval for it, but you know it's something that I uh, absolutely uh, pushed hard on because, as I said, um, our uh, budgets look very very different next year with with that new TV money. And yeah, it's not an uh, it's not a uh, insignificant uh, reduction that we're going to see in our ticketing revenue. And listen, I hope that we'll see full uh, houses at Goodison every week next season. So um, that should help recoup some of that, but there's no getting away from it. It is it is a big financial giveaway by the club. But as I said, I come back to the point that it is it, it is the right thing to do. And, uh, and it's great that fans have... Uh, uh, I've appreciated it and said thank you for it. Um, yeah, it's pleasing to hear. We have to just do what's right for Everton. So I, I I'm really not bothered whether we are uh, pioneering or, or trailblazing. Um, you know, all that matters to me is that we uh, give a fair deal to the Evertonians, and and I guess above all else, we fill Goodison Park. As I said, fill Goodison Park every week, every game next season. That's the most important thing for me. Stodds, what about that for a decision to reduce your season ticket prices? It's fantastic news, isn't it? Great news. Great news, not only for the kids as well, but for the adults uh, to reduce the prices. I think, I think it's fantastic what uh, Robert and the club have done. Season ticket holders, basically at the start of the season, are putting their confidence in the club, aren't they? They're saying, right, I'm going to yeah. come every week. Yeah, the, the, hopefully uh, we, we'll sell a lot of season tickets that's that's the aim but I think the price of them does it is a fantastic gesture by the club uh, as Robert said not only were they going to freeze them they've lowered them uh, it's, it, it's great news and the announcement this week from the Premier League that from next season through to 2018-19 away tickets are going to be capped at £30 and again fair play to Robert Elston because at the recent Premier League summit he canvassed for that yeah, and rightly so. Um, I'd like it a little bit lower. I'm, I'm one of them, but I think it will benefit our Everton fans because we go in vast numbers. Whether we get 3,000 allocation or 5,000 allocation, we sell out week in, week out. So for the away supporters travelling, it's fantastic news for the Blues. Especially as we've got unique away fans. Absolutely brilliant. Right, next up on the Everton show is the skipper. Phil Jagielka continues to be the model of consistency at the back for the Blues and he's been as frustrated as everyone else that the team hasn't managed to get the results the performances have deserved. You know, we've had a couple of good results and a couple of bad results at home, away, you know, recently and, and things haven't been what we wanted it to be. But you know, we've managed to stay in the Cups, we've performed well in the Cups and we need to keep doing that to make sure we, we keep this season alive. Obviously, the, the league's still available for us to go on a really good run and, and, and sort of save it and, and finish a, bit, a little bit higher up. But, you know, realistically, you know, we're a couple of games away from winning a trophy, so we've got to make sure that we, we come out of the chaps flying, uh, get the, the fans on our side, get the fans something to shout about. I think they've been happy for the majority of the game uh, last week, but unfortunately, we let ourselves down the last sort of 15 minutes. For a number of reasons, but you know we can't do much about that now, other than go out and, and try and perform against Chelsea. The Goodison atmosphere can can always be a factor, but on Saturday against West Ham, that atmosphere was was fantastic for so much of the game. How important is it to replicate something like that again on Saturday? Yeah, I've always said about the atmosphere. People are, are quick to try and point it out as it being a little bit of a negative one, but it's simple football. When you're playing well and you're doing well, and the team are working hard. You know, we've got some amazing fans. When things aren't going well, people get a little bit edgy. That's just a natural reaction. You know, if we're 2-0 up in a game and we miss a penalty, and then you can see everything gets a little bit edgy. And unfortunately for us, we were down to 10 men at the time. You know, we've got to factor that in as well. You know, there was tired legs, and unfortunately, we didn't manage to see it out. But like you say, we we were played well for 75 minutes. The fans were fantastic for 75 minutes or so. And... Unfortunately, as as every probably most people in the stadium got that little bit edgy, and you know we've got to try and stop that. And the only way we can stop that is by being a bit more professional on the pitch, seeing games out. And I'm sure if we did, if we kept it two 0 for a little bit longer, um, we'd be talk sat here talking about how great the fans were, how great the players were, and we had a fantastic day. But unfortunately, that's not how it happened. Uh, the cup games are a little bit more special. You know, obviously the the best one this year is the, the first leg of the semi final against Man City. If we can replicate any sort of performance and any sort of uh, backing from the fans as, as that day, then I'm sure everyone will go home happy. Snodds, we have to mention the West Ham game. It's mm. another Premier League game at Goodison Park that we should have won and probably deserve to win. For 78 minutes, as I thought it was a fantastic game of football mm. from a Blues point of view. I thought uh, the crowd were fantastic. I thought they really got behind the players. I thought every one of the players performed 
uh, to their ability as well. And I was thoroughly enjoying it. I really was. Kevin Morales was a disappointment that he got sent off and we went down to 10 men. And perhaps that's where we got a little bit tired the last 10, 12 minutes. But the goals we conceded weren't great goals from our point of view. Mm. We should have stopped the crosses in and hopefully defended them a little bit. I'm sure the lads uh, have talked about that. But overall, 78 minutes, we were excellent and so were the crowd. You and I really enjoyed the game. We said mm. as much in commentary. And when Mo Bezic won the penalty, Romelu sticks it away, we win the game. Yeah, I, I listened to uh, Slaven Bilic's interview afterwards as well, and he said that as well, Daz. He said if Rom puts his penalty away, it could, it could have been three or four, because mm. uh, the keeper pulled a great save off with his, with his feet when Rom went through one-on-one, -on -one, so it would have been totally different. With Rom missing that, and I'm not blaming Rom at all, because I thought he played really well on the day as well. Uh, when he did miss it, he gave them a little spur, and that first goal inspired him a little bit, and unfortunately, they went on to win it one of those days. And that's it for part one of this week's Everton show. We'll take a quick break right now and in part two we feature the eclectic mix of the under 21s, the under 18s, a ladies lunch at the Hilton and an art exhibition hosted by Chang and Everton Football Club and you only get that on the Everton show. Welcome back to part two of this week's programme. Everton under-21s were on a national stage on Monday night when their visit to Sunderland was screened live on BT Sport. Sadly, the Young Blues suffered a wee bit of stage fright and despite a valiant performance, they left the North East empty-handed. Kieran Dowell scored another eye-catching goal, but it didn't prevent Everton's under-21s losing out by the odd goal in five to Sunderland. The Black Cats named a strong side which included Ola Toivonen and Sebastian Larsson the pair having over 120 Sweden caps between them. And it was tall forward Toivonen who nodded his side ahead on 20 minutes. Two minutes later it was 2-0 when Thomas Beedling poked home after another cross. Everton immediately set about getting back into the game and pulled the goal back before half time when Thomas Robson put the ball into his own net. Joe Williams and Leandro Rodriguez went close to levelling before Toivonen scored the killer third goal on the counter-attack with 17 minutes to go. There was still time for Dowell to add to his catalogue of superb goals with a 25-yard free kick, but Sunderland held on for victory. We've been playing really well recently and um, we, we, we should have beaten them last night. Um, to go down to 2-0 right at the start from two set pieces isn't really acceptable from our part of the game but um, we've shown like, throughout the whole game that we, we were dominant really. We missed a few chances really to get level or maybe take the lead um, but all the lads are a bit disappointed with the loss but we need to move on now and keep going, keep going well to the end of the season. A frustrating night then for young Gethin Jones and the under-21s. Now let me tell you, it's not just the first team who have a big game against Chelsea this weekend. The under-18 travel to West London on Saturday to play their Chelsea counterparts in their second game of the National Academy Premier League playoff phase. Everton opened their campaign with a 1-0 win against Reading last week and coach John Ebrill was impressed with what he saw. Very pleased, played, uh, played really well, the boys played really well. Uh, the game had a bit of everything, really good development game. Uh, difficult start, they were on top at the beginning, uh, we, we withstood that, gradually took over. We played some really good stuff in the first half and scored. Uh, and credit to Reading, they really piled on the pressure late on and it was fantastic really that the players uh, had the resilience to see the game out. Yeah, fantastic team goal as well, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and the boys are capable of that. Uh, it was a good finish from Anthony, uh, but it was yeah, it was good, good play leading up to that. And to be fair, we, we had four or five opportunities similar to that from, from good play. So it was pleasing to get the goal that counted. You touched on it there, but towards the end, Reading really did come on strong, plenty of chances. And the lads had to show a different side of their game there, didn't they? Yeah, and that's what it's all about. You know, we don't we don't want games. Well, I certainly don't want games for the players, which are which are too easy. And and this game certainly, from from the players' development point of view, was was it needed a bit of everything that they're going to need throughout their careers, hopefully. So. Yeah, it was a good game and uh, the boys were in great spirits afterwards, but told 
tells its tale really that it was important to them. One tough away game down, but another one to come this weekend. Yeah, it's a great challenge, you know, to, to go last week, you know, to, to travel down the day before. Uh, these are really good challenges and experiences for the players. They cope with it really well last week. Chelsea this week will be another step up, I believe. So uh, we need to be ready. And uh, I'm, I'm really confident with, with the boys because they seem to, to enjoy the bigger challenges. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can put on a good performance which, which may result in a win, but first and foremost, we need to put that performance in place. As we said earlier, Snods, the under-18s off to a flyer in the playoff phase of the National Premier Academy League. Chelsea at the weekend, it'd be great if they could be crowned national champions again, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be fantastic. Uh, it's all about the players. Uh, I know they're getting well coached by the likes of John Ebrill, John Doolan, and Tatey, Sheeds, etc. But it's all about the players and how they develop. The long run, you want to see them players in the first team. That's the main aim of the academy. Get players through, get them into that first team. But it's great. It breeds success when they're a good side. And uh, they're certainly performing to high, high standards at the minute. You're a young footballer as part of that under-18 setup. Mm. You want to look yourself in the mirror. You want to look around the dressing room and say, lads, we're the best in the country. We've just won the National League. Yeah, it is. Uh, you're proud to play for, for Everton Football mm. Club. You put that shirt on and you're representing Everton Football Club. You want to win. I know from a young age, nine and ten, results are not that important. But when you start 18, 19, 20s, it is important, the results. And it's great that uh, they're doing so well. It is indeed. Good luck to the boys down at Chelsea this weekend. Two big games, Everton and Chelsea, this coming weekend. Right, now for something completely different. The Hilton Hotel in Liverpool was the impressive setting for an Everton ladies' lunch on Tuesday afternoon. The room was packed with Evertonian females. Gerard De La Feo was the guest of honour, and we took a chance by sending Ian Snowden along as well. Well, I would like you all now to give a great big warm welcome to Gerard De La Feo. For the for the ladies' lounge, and for me it's the first time, and I think it's a, it's a good experience because the the ladies uh, meet me, and I'm, it's a pleasure to come here for for another event for Everton. Yes, yeah, so are you looking forward to answering a few questions, having a few pictures taken, signing a few autographs? Yes, yes, I try, I try answer good because. I I start lessons. I I practice my my English, but I try I try and and yes I'm I'm happy to stay here and I I answer all the questions for for the ladies. Great, uh, Jerry was so relaxed as well. Uh, ladies' lunch with Jerry Delafeo. Uh, all the ladies enjoyed it certainly. I think they just loved that Spanish accent. But uh, yeah, lovely, polite lad. And uh, his English is coming on as well. And uh, yeah, I'm sure he enjoyed it up on that stage. It's a tough life, Snods, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not even had a drink as well. I weren't allowed a drink, so but uh, no, it was good. Jerry was excellent. Uh, I watched his uh, interview. Well, when he was getting interviewed with the lads in Sing Singapore, does mm. remember that? And yeah. he didn't really understand many questions that were being put to him. His English has improved, and he certainly uh, he certainly enjoyed it that afternoon. Didn't get the dress code email though, did he? No, uh, <laughs> there were me and Sharpie in his club suits, and Jerry turned up in jeans and a hoodie. Uh, but no, he, he was great, mm. and I'm sure that all the Everton all the ladies there enjoyed it too. You must be frustrated because Aaron Leonard's in such great form. Yeah, and, that, and we were talking about that. He was sat next to me and he, and he says, I can't expect to get in the way Aaron's form is and how well he's playing. He's just got to wait his opportunity and then grasp it again. He's certainly a quality player that mm. uh, the fans certainly want in the team, but as they understand as well, he's got to be a little bit patient due to Aaron's form. And he is a lovely lad as well. Ill time will come. 
I'm sure. Well, from afternoon tea at the Hilton to an art exhibition at the John Lennon Design Centre at Liverpool University. We did promise you an eclectic mix in this segment of the show, didn't we? Our main partner, Chang Beer, helped to stage an exhibition of art produced by Thailand-born, Liverpool-based students. And that was all to celebrate the 160th anniversary of relations between Thailand and the UK. Amongst the exhibits were some stunning paintings of Everton players, past and present. It's really important to support anything that the uh, Thai students do in Liverpool. It's amazing that they're able to bring in Thai culture and our partnership with Everton. It's just really nice to be able to bring all these different aspects together and put some amazing work of art up on the walls and also raise money for really good charities. Anything that we come to the club to do with anything with Thai culture, we're always really well supported. And as you can see, the players' signatures on the artwork, it just adds to the whole weight of, of the artwork. The Liverpool Thai Society is made up of around 60 students yeah, living here in Liverpool, studying at the University of Liverpool and Liverpool John Morse University. It's not possible to have this kind of event if we don't have support from uh, Shang Beer and Everton Football Club. It's, we are really appreciate. I'm hoping that some of these exhibits will be sold to raise money, not just for the Liverpool Thai Society matter, but for Zoe's Place Hospice as well. Yes, that's, that's it's more important than our society, actually. We would love everybody to take a look at the wonderful, fantastic artworks and buy it to make a donation. We have a terrific relationship with uh, our sponsors, Chang. Uh, it's going from strength to strength as well, and very nice of them to sponsor the art exhibition here at Liverpool University, and uh, terrific uh, artwork, as we can see behind us. They're a very proud nation, full stop, and um, we try our best to enhance that with them uh, when, they, when we bring them over here to England, and they replicate that, and, and more when we go over to Thailand. So it's a really special relationship, and uh, clearly there's an awful lot of talented artists out there in Thailand as well. We want to we want to try and engage with with the Thai students here, and our relationship with Chang allows us to do that as a football club. Their, their artwork's amazing. It is it's uh, it just looks so lifelike. It's brilliant. Snods, it's a pleasure to help our friends from Chang and all the people we meet from Thailand because they're such genuinely lovely people. Yeah, Graham Stewart said it all there for me in, the, in his interview, how friendly they are, <clears throat> how, how good relationships we got with Chang. And when we go over to Thailand, the people are there are so hospitable. Uh, they're great to get on with. And it, it, it is a, a, a lovely, lovely country and Chang are great people as well that uh, sponsor Everton. And they're so passionate about Everton Football Club as well. And that's the end of the culture section of this week's Everton show. Coming up after a short break is our big interview slot. And I can promise you that you'll enjoy this week's very much indeed. In this week of Big FA Cup football, I was delighted to catch up with a winner in 1984 and a finalist in 85 and again in 86. The irrepressible Peter Reid is up next. <laughs> Welcome back to part three of this week's programme. It's time for our big interview slot right now, and we've got a really special guest this week. Peter Reid played 235 times for Everton after being brought in from Bolton Wanderers, but his legacy goes way beyond statistics. He was just what we needed at a time we needed it most. Reid was back at Goodison Park earlier this week, and he sat down in the home dressing room to speak to the Everton show. We started off by getting his thoughts on Saturday's FA Cup quarter-final. Well, I'll tell you what, it's against the side who were in terrific form. Uh, Gus Hiddings done a great job, but the atmosphere here will be white hot. I mean, they won't fancy coming to Goodison. And I think we've underperformed in the league, honestly. But the crowd won a trophy. Just our supporters won a trophy. So this is going to be an absolutely magnificent occasion. And, and on art, I think we're going to win it. I think we're going to win it. We've got a good side and I think it's the last trophy we can win. And I think, well, let's just win this tie first because it's going to be our, but I, I fancy us to win it. Some of the football we've played this season has been terrific and we quite Brilliant. simply haven't got the points that we've deserved. Um, would well, I wouldn't with go that? with that. I think, I think football's about attacking and defending. 
I think you've got to get that happy balance and even being critical and being critical, we've got to win football matches. And with the ability we've got here and the team that Roberto's got, we should be doing better. And, and, and when we've got the ball, we're as good as anyone. I mean, the boy Lukaku is outstanding, the boy Barkley. I mean, people go on to me, what he, what he doesn't do. No, what he does do, you know, and get that balance around him. And we've got quality players all through the team. I've just mentioned them too, but quality players all, all through the team. And for me, results-wise, we've underperformed. Hopefully, we'll get it right in the cup tie. As a fully paid up member of the midfielders union, yeah. you must be delighted with the way Gareth Barry continues to perform. Well, Barry and McCarthy have been outstanding. I mean, outstanding, but as you say, Gareth Barry's one of them players you don't really like it's till he's not there. What a great job. He reads it and he's, a, he's what I call a good early passer of the ball. He, he does it ever so well. And you know, you've got McCarthy who's been out there. And Bessick looks a, a, a terrific player. You know, we, we've been. A lot of players are being out injured who we've, who we've missed and we've, we've got by without that. I think if you if you, in terms of the squad, it's, a, it's an excellent squad and, and Gareth Barry has been possibly player of the season. Well, it, it's arguable, isn't it, because they think Lukaku's been good, you know, uh, Barkley's been good. It's, uh, it's a really good squad. 90 minutes away from Wembley. What's your take, Peter, on FA Cup semi-finals at Wembley? Uh, by the way, 90 minutes away, uh, away from Wembley into quarter-final. It's changed, hasn't it? Yeah. It's changed, hasn't it? But like you rightly say, once you're there, you get, if you can get past that hurdle, and it's a big, big obstacle, Chelsea, it's uh, the Evertonians start smelling it. And knowing the Evertonians as I do and knowing the affinity, they've well, they had in the 80s, and certainly when they, they, they get that smell of Wembley, it's something that's hard to stop. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be one step down the road, and um, once that Everton juggernaut gets going, it's hard to stop. We had some classic FA Cup quarter-finals when you were part of the team, Peter. In order, 83-84, only your mate could have scored that diving header. Uh, I mean, I still, it, was, uh, it was a rainy day. Um, that's the county, uh, sorry, uh, not county, wasn't it? Yeah, one of I play for them as well. And the ball's come in the box, and he hasn't got the pace in them days to go and slide it in, and he's gone horizontal. And if you'd ever, I think you see it, everyone's seen it on the box, but how you get a half volley header <laughs> into the back of the net is a gift. And you've got to give our late manager, Howard Kendall, all the credit for all them days of head tennis. It worked, <laughs> it worked in that game. It was, a, it was an incredible goal, and only, only Andy Gray, mind you, he did have the biggest forehead in the world, <laughs> didn't he? So it was, it was easy for him, it would have been harder for the mere mortal. <laughs> Twelve months later on, and yeah. again, Absolutely. one of your other mates, only Kevin Sheedy, could have popped the free kick past Paul Cooper, one in one corner, one in the other. Well, he's hit, he's hit the one in the corner, and I've just gone, oh, I would run off and hit the referee's blue. And um, I'm standing there like a dummy, and I said, well, what are we going to do? I'll tap it to the side, he said. God's honest truth. As though I was like Coco the Clown. <laughs> Just leave it. Leave it to me. And I said, What are you going to do? He said, I'm going to stick in the opposite corner. And I went, Flip off. <laughs> And he just come up and he's flighted this one, the bottom corner. And Goodison stood still yeah. till it hit the back of the net. And then it was the biggest, I mean, because as you know, the Goodison crowd love class. And that's the only word I can describe that free kick. And obviously, I think Derek gets the equaliser. A, a good, a good Ipswich side, by the way. It was a very good top, side. Top yeah. players in the Butchers, the Osmonds, mm -hmm. all, all that lot. Good team. And uh, Derek equalised off a cr across from our left back on the right side of the box, and Derek equalised. And we went down to Portman Road in an icy night, and Graham Sharp gets a goal that it doesn't get the credit it deserves only from him when you speak to him <laughs> after three glasses of wine. And it's the best goal in the world, but it was an excellent goal. So I always, I always remember that. Fantastic. That was a great win. That. Mm, very there. good win. A great win. 12 months on again, yeah. but up to 1986 now. It's the Gary Lineker season. Mm. Down at Luton, 2 0 down. We looked dead and buried, didn't we? Quarter final. What we did it was on the, the uh, artificial surface. And I, I played in the game. Well, no, I wouldn't say I played. I was there because I was <laughs> useless on that surface. And uh, I would made a substitution. I thought he was going to bring me off. I was that bad. But he brought, uh, I don't know who he brought off, but he brought Inchi on. And Inchi was brilliant on the balance, even after he he, he come back from a bad knee. And he's, he's got a, a couple in that game. And, and they were in... 
them games we used to have against them were, were brutal games. They were good footballs, were brutal. And we, we managed to draw it. And then I think um, Gary Lineker got, we, we knocked one over the top and he's outpaced Foster and drilled one in the bottom corner in front of, uh, I think, nearly 50,000 at Goodison. I always remember that. That was, a, that was an outstanding night as well. So quarterfinals have been good for us. And uh, hopefully this one will be as well. People talk about the magic of the FA Cup might be fading on a national scale, but the Evertonians love it, don't they? And I do, and, they, and, and like I can't. Well, I'm an Evertonian, and, and I was I was just done a piece for the BBC there, and I've got a cabinet at home, and the first medal I won at Everton, in the successful sides, the FA Cup, I still look at that medal, and it gives me a, a schoolboy, Eton lad, council house lad, FA Cup winners a medal. Everton, Everton, all I'm Evertonians love it. Peter Reid loves it as well. Great. Doesn't get better. The best, that, best competition, best single cup competition ever. Still is as well. And I loved what you said off camera before, Peter, about the final itself against Watford. And again, it's often overlooked because he wore a great big hat at the end. But John Bailey had a fine game. No, outstanding. I was, I, I mean, I always say to Bell, you were man of the match, and there was one where they broke, and he's, he's, he's at nil nil, and clip one around the post. You know, clean sheet, and then I think we've just gone up. Uh, Kevin one two with me. Richo's not one in. We've got a ricochet. Sharps you put in the bottom corner, but um, big hat, big goggles. But <laughs> he was the best player on the pitch, in my opinion, that day. And he still thinks I'm taking the mick when I tell him. <laughs> but he was. He was generally the best player. And um, like I said before, that was the first trophy the great, the late great Howard Kendall won for this club, and it's my first for this club and it's my favourite and if you ask Howard it was his as well. Every FA Cup tie played at this stadium, every FA Cup tie involved in Everton will evoke memories of Howard Kendall Peter, you still miss him don't you? Um, every time you, you come in the main entrance you'd expect to see him and that's, that's on non-match days, yeah. match days it's a hundred times worse but that's the legacy he's left and it's uh, like I said before you know you can't take memories away from you. We've all got him of him, and um, he's part of this club, and he always will be. Snods, I really enjoyed doing that interview with Reedy. He's one of those people you could listen to him for <laughs> hours and hours. Do you know what, Des? I thought I were watching Last of the Summer Wine there. <laughs> <laughs> um, he is inspirational uh, character. He's great to be around. Love being in his company. He's a winner. He is a winner, and I, and I noticed that when uh, I first walked in that Everton dressing room in '87. There were a lot of winners, but there were no bigger winner than Peter Reid. He was determined. Uh, as I say, I can't speak highly enough of him. I love being in his company. He'd be the first to admit as well how those little legs got him to the League Championship twice, the World Cup with England, the FA Cup, the Cup Winners' Cup, Player <laughs> of the Year. Yeah, because he, he had a bad injury at Bolton. Uh, they, they were all questioning him. How did he pass his medical to come to Everton? But uh, once he put that blue shirt on, I tell you what, whether you played against him or with him, you knew Peter Reid was on that football field because he, he was so competitive. The Derby games, oh dear me, he were like a man possessed. <laughs> he really was. I don't think he yet for three days before <laughs> it. Uh, he just wanted to be to have a part of Liverpool. He, he was unbelievable. But no, I, I playing with Peter Reid and knowing him, he, he's, he's a great fella. He's well respected by everybody in mm. the game, isn't he? He's not just an Everton legend, he's an English football legend, really, isn't he? He is. He is. He speaks so passionately about it. He tells the truth. He speaks the truth. Uh, I'd like to still see him in football in, in the manager's role. Yeah. I, re I think he's so much to offer to a football club that uh, he should be still involved in football. He just ambled forward at Howard's funeral at the mm. cathedral, made his way into the pulpit, didn't get any pieces of paper out <laughs> and delivered a eulogy that people will remember forever. Yeah, fantastic. I talked to Howard's wife, Lil, and she said how good it were for Reedy uh, to go up there and just off the cuff, he had everybody in laughter, really. Uh, one of the saddest days that you'll ever record. Mm. Uh, but his love for Howard Kendall, uh, you can see in his interview, was, was immense. And uh, just his love for Everton Football Club, mm. his passion for Everton Football Club, he, he's far beyond... Pff, not. I'm not saying I'm not an Evertonian, I truly am, but he's, he's just fantastic.
what I loved as well was his passion for the FA Cup because I know mm. that you and I share that passion for the oldest and still the best mm. cup competition of them all. I love it. Come Saturday at half past five, dear me, I will be a nervous wreck because <laughs> I just want us to get to Wembley. And, and yeah, I'm not a big believer in the semi-final being at Wembley, but if it means us going there and them fans getting there, I want to win the FA Cup. I don't want to just go to, for the semi-final. I want to win it and uh, hopefully we can start that by winning on Saturday. And hopefully you and I will be joining in the songs during the commentary, oh, which we've done before. I hope so. I hope so. If we beat Chelsea, I tell you what, I'd be singing. Let's hope it's next stop, Wembley. And that brings us nicely to the end of part three. Coming up in the fourth and final section of this week's Everton show is an in-depth look ahead to the FA Cup quarter-final. <laughs> Everton Football Club have appeared in 25 FA Cup semi-finals. All that stands between us and the 26th is Chelsea, the team we played when we last reached the final itself. We could throw all sorts of statistics at you with regards to Everton and the FA Cup, but now it's all about half past five on Saturday. Here's Roberto Martinez looking ahead to his own third FA Cup quarter-final in four seasons. Well, you can see that the, the, the Chelsea uh, team in the league, they, they're full of confidence, uh, they played with... Uh, with a different, uh, a different worry, uh, they don't look a, a team cagey. That they, they, uh, they've been accumulating very good results. They're still undefeated. Um, the other side that they've been getting stronger and stronger. Certain individuals reaching very good levels, and we know we're facing a, a team that they won the league last season. They got incredible amounts of experience, and they're going to be very difficult opposition. But I just think that. We're looking into, into the FA Cup and it's been that sort of season for us that we need to concentrate on ourselves, whatever the challenge has been, if it's going and playing at home against a League Two side or going away from home in a very tricky fixture or facing Premier League opposition uh, away from Goodison, we'll always show that we were mentally ready and it's exactly the same for this, this weekend. We're playing at Goodison, we're looking forward to have that, that, that support, I thought the fans were magnificent against against West Ham for that period that we needed them when we were down to ten men, and we all end up with no sharing the the the, the, the happiness and and the the victorious feeling that we should have. So it's, it's almost we we need to just support each other even more and and going into the quarterfinal with a real uh, feeling of unfinished uh, unfinished business. Snods, I was just about to ask you who the key players for Chelsea will be on Saturday, who to look out for, but forget that. Who are our key players? I think our key players are going to be the goalkeeper and the back four and a defensive midfield player because I have no qualms about uh, us going out there and scoring goals. Mm. We're good at it. Uh, so I think Ron will be good, Barkley will be good, I think we'll get chances, hopefully we'll convert them, but I think defensively. We've got to be solid, Daz. We know we've got a lot of goals away, especially at Goodison Park this season. I think if our goalkeeper back four and a sitting midfield player are really, really strong, we win the game because I think we've got enough ability going forward and enough flair to hurt Chelsea. And we've got goals from midfield, haven't we? And the wide positions, Ross Barkley and Aaron Lennon. Aaron Lennon's scoring goals for fun at the minute and it's great. He's enjoying his football. Big Rom, he's always going to be a threat to him. Ross Barkley. Just defensively, do our job, and hopefully we'll win the game. Can't come quickly enough, can it? <laughs> well, there's an Everton player in the squad for Saturday who actually played in last season's FA Cup final. Tom Cleverley was part of the Aston Villa side that was soundly beaten by Arsenal at Wembley. He's missed our last two games through illness, but as he told the Everton show, he's now feeling fit and well, and he's certainly ready to fight for another trip to the National Stadium. Yeah, I was a bit under, under the weather last week, and th these things happen in football, so I was disappointed I couldn't play against the club I played for last year and uh, and see some old faces there but um, no, I'm, I'm back to full fitness now it's not a problem. So you've been able to, to join back in training with the lads this week then? Yeah yeah I have been, I've been training fully and um, and it's just one of those things I'm, I'm ready for this weekend. Must have been quite disappointed never nice picking up an illness of course but you, you was playing so well as well. Yeah I mean I'm, I'm not taking it as a massive disappointment these things happen and I, I've missed I've had to miss a week of football but um, oh, the main thing is I'm ready for Saturday and I'll do everything I can to help the team to get through to, to Wembley. Uh, and it's clearly a big game, like you were saying then, Wembley, just one game away now. Yeah, it's massive. Um, it's, 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 we need to do well in the FA Cup this year. 
and it's important that we, we get to Wembley and give the club a lift and give our fans something to shout about and we really have to put in a performance on Saturday against a strong Chelsea team. Is it an advantage that the, the kickoff is half past five, it's under the goodest and lights, the stadium will be rocking? Yeah, I, I quite like the idea. I think that there'll be a massive atmosphere on Saturday. It's, um, it's obviously the stakes are high with a place at Wembley uh, uh, there and um, hopefully we can really add to that atmosphere by putting in a high tempo and, and strong performance. And you've been here before, of course, last season. You, you made it all the way to Wembley in the final. Yeah, I've been, I've been lucky in the fact I played in a few semi-finals in the last couple of years for Everton this year and, and for Villa last year. And hopefully I can go that one step further and get my hands on the trophy, but we've got to win Saturday first. Is it a boost as well when you see how well we have played against Chelsea already so far in the two league matches this season? We scored three goals in both of those games. Yeah, it is. I mean, we know we can do it against them. They're, they're a strong team and they seem to be coming back into good form. But um, we, I think we've got the game plan and the players to beat them. So that was Tom Cleverley there speaking in a red top or a little off red, shall we say. Yeah. And he was with John Stones at St. Lawrence Primary School in Kirby doing their bit for sport relief. So well done to them mm. too. But Tom has been so unlucky, hasn't he? He seems to be getting to the stage where he's really shown what he can do. Then he either gets injured or, as for the last couple of weeks, he's been unwell. Yeah, when he first arrived at the club, I, I thought I won't, I'd not really seen much of Tom play live, and I thought I wonder what he's going to bring to the to the team. But after watching his performances grow and grow, as as he has as a person wearing a blue shirt, I think uh, I think he, think he works exceptionally hard. Um, he, he never stops. He doesn't seem to moan wherever he's played, whether he's out wide or central midfield player I think he just likes playing football and uh, hopefully he will be able to get to another semi-final. The likes of Tom Cleverley, Joel Robles, James McCarthy, Gareth Barry, they've played in FA Cup finals, that little bit of know-how could be important couldn't it? Well let's hope so, let's hope so and we've also got some experienced players in there as well um, that will want to get to Wembley, it, it must be fantastic, the boys are one step away from playing a semi-final uh, we keep reiterating it's not the final. It, it is the semi-final, but it's Wembley. It be pff, Evertonians will be will be down there in front. But we have got a big game, does. There's no question about it. They are a quality side, and if we beat them, we deserve to be in the semi-final. Yeah, it's too early to talk about the final, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Romelu Lukaku's goal last weekend was his 23rd of a very productive season. Indeed, his goals record since joining Everton is absolutely terrific for someone who it's easy to forget is still a young man. What he hasn't done yet is find the net against Chelsea. He'll be looking to change that, of course, on Saturday. But what he doesn't subscribe to is this notion that any team can claim that their name is on the cup. I mean, you have to earn it, <laughs> to be fair. I don't, I don't really have that moment. Like, I, I never really think like that. I think you have to earn what you deserve. So to us, if we keep on winning games, we're going we're gonna to earn what we deserve. And especially the games against Chelsea, I mean... If we win the game against Chelsea, then you know that we can look forward. We're gonna go to Wembley, which is the biggest venue of the of football. So, you know, I mean, we have to work hard to earn what we to earn what we deserve because you know you're playing against good sides in this, in this league, and um, it's not going to be easy. But we are up for it. We worked hard, and uh, we're gonna give our maximum. What was you thinking when the draw was made? Because obviously you see we get a home tie and then you realise we're playing Chelsea and mm -hmm. a team of their quality. Oh, yeah, I was uh, I was a bit, uh, I was laughing. I was laughing because I was like, oh my God, again. But uh, yeah, it's nice to, to play against a good side, you know. For a player, you want to play against those big teams and to me it doesn't matter when or when. I just want to play against the big teams all the time and... And, uh, you know, in the Premier League, you always against, uh, play against good sides. And even now in the Cup, good game at Goodison Park in the evening. Perfect. And the league meeting earlier in the season, we, we played fantastically well. Nasey, of course, got the hat-trick that day. Yeah. But that's got to give us confidence and belief. We beat them once already at Goodison this season. Yeah, but I think the Chelsea team from that moment of time is not the Chelsea team of now. The players uh, in the team are playing better football. Diego Costa is back scoring again. Hazard is getting his momentum as well. So it's going to be a total different game. I don't think in football you should never compare one game to another. You should always expect that the other team is going to come at you and be better than they were in the, at the start. And that's what's going to happen. They're going to be better and they're going to be a bit sharper. But I think we have to be, we have to 
be better than them and be sharper than them to, to win the game. Snod's Goodison Park could be bouncing on Saturday evening to our favourite tune, Romelu Lukaku. Yeah, he's so laid back, Daz, in his interview. Uh, half past five on Saturday, I want to see him bouncing Chelsea defenders off him. I want him to terrorise their, their back four and I want him to score goals. And I want him to say to the Chelsea people, this is what you're missing. Mm. You sold me. I've got a point to prove, and this is what you're missing. I hope he does the business, the big fella. He's big enough and strong enough to bounce oh. a few defenders around Goodison Park, Without isn't he? Doubt. I wouldn't like to think I'd be playing against Big Rom. Uh, I would certainly uh, leave him alone, because I think if you upset him, then mm. that's when he gets a little bit angry. I'm hoping one or two Chelsea players say something to him, give him a little kick and get him fired up, because he's, he's unplayable at times when he's, when he's with it. Uh, he scored fantastic goals this season. Uh, great ratio. And... Uh, I just don't. I'm, I'm buzzing for Saturday. I really am. I love the FA Cup. And if we get a penalty, Rom, just whack it. Just to end it as hard <laughs> as you can, Rom. <laughs> because that's what we do. <laughs> right, we've done our bit. We've painted the picture and we've set the scene. It's all down to the players now. Once again, Everton stand on the cusp of Wembley. The famous arch is so close yet still so far away. It's the FA Cup quarter final. It's Everton versus Chelsea, and it's under the Goodison Park floodlights. What more could you ask for? My thanks to Snods for joining us this week. Thanks to you all for tuning in. We've really enjoyed your company, and let's hope that next week's Everton show is a celebration of another FA Cup semi-final appearance. We shall see. <laughs>